day of June 2022. Today's class graciously sponsored by Victor Mizrahi Cohen from Mexico, Le'ilu Nishmat, his beloved father, Eliyahu Ben Lela Alava Shalom. Additionally, today's class graciously sponsored by Mr. Ernest Maslaton and family, Le'ilu Nishmat Eliyahu Ben Aliza. Additionally, today's class dedicated by Mr. Clemente Rahamin Bela Hamuya Cohen, Le'ilu Nishmat, his beloved brother, Eliyahu Hakohen Ben Sada, and special dedication today for the Refua Shelema of Malka Bat Shindel, and also Malka Haya Bat Joyce Simha. Yiratzon, that the Neshamot have an Aliyah in Gan Eden, and those who need Refua Shelema, they also have Refua Shelema among the Holim of Am Israel. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm going to speak about it now. Today, additionally, and I will clarify this, a year ago, we woke up to the unfortunate tragedy in Surfside, Florida. To the Gregorian calendar, it was a day like today. In the Jewish calendar, it will be a bit later. So there is going, to, because of Shana Me'opedet, because of the leap year. So Be'ezat Hashem, and closer to the Hebrew date, uh, we are going to organize a community-wide program. And Be'ezat Hashem, as the details become available, will share them with the Kahal. But I do know for a fact that this is coming, uh, and Be'ezat Hashem, uh, it's already being planned. I already spoke to some of the rabbis of that area, and we're doing a joint community effort to gather everybody and to have special prayers and to have a lecture, etc. But definitely a, 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 an unfortunate a tragedy, tragedy that regretfully close to 100 people lost their lives, plus everything else that comes after it. After that, the aftermath, the stress level, the anguish, the pain, the suffering, the, 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 the physical loss, the emotional trauma, because I'm somebody involved uh, in Atzala and uh, many other community matters. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a, a meeting with not only Atzala, but many of the first responders from the police department, Metro Dade Fire Rescue, and the ambulance services, and the common uh, denominator was the trauma that professionals experience when they deal with this type of unfortunately and unexpected tragedy. As much as they are prepared, but nobody prepares you, God forbid, for tragedy. You know, you can be prepared to a certain extent, but there are certain scenarios and situations that it does take a toll on the person. And uh, many of the responders, which were non-Jewish, including police chiefs and many different governmental agencies, they were very, very thankful that the Jewish community stepped up to the plate, not only in bringing food, which is a given, but also to provide the counseling necessary to give them the mental tools and the emotional tools to survive. Because if you ever read post 9-11 tragedies, God forbid, the trauma that people experience, besides the, 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 the medical conditions that were a result of 9-11, especially the responders that were cleaning up the debris and looking for remains and whatever the lungs absorb, God forbid, but Be'ezat Hashem, a thing that was important that I don't omit this statement, that we are familiar, we are aware of it. Today is the English date, the Hebrew date will be forthcoming in a few weeks, and Be'ezat Hashem uh, will have a, 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 a meaningful and proper memorial service to eternalize the memory of those that left the world unexpectedly, without any prior knowledge of any kind. I'd like to continue with the topic of yesterday. But I was asked to make a live demonstration. So I'm going to do it with your permission. Good? 
allowed? You do push. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I just work here. I was asked to illustrate or demonstrate rather how to put on the talit. I know that we know. I believe that we know. I hope that we know. I hope. You'll be surprised. Let me explain. The mitzvah of wearing talit. And by Ezzat Hashem today, I'm going to give you the second half of yesterday's class that describes the benefits of the talit. So the Lacha says, a lot of these blessings, and it says the Gemara clearly, the language at least of the al Shimoni, Belita Keda Bechahalacha. A person that puts on the talit and puts it on him properly. So what does it mean properly? So I'm gonna do the following. Let me step back a bit. So the audience in Aitora also can see. Even though you don't see my face for a few seconds, but you remember my good looks, so I can remain standing. I'm not kidding. Thank you. <laughs> I can remain standing for a few moments. So first of all, we need to train ourselves to make sure that the sisiyot are kasher. Now, there are many halachot. What does it mean the sisiyot is kasher? But I'm going to give you a basic one. Make sure, the way many people do, I personally do this. I'll take the talit, I put it here, and I look at the corners of the CC. As long as they have eight strings on each corner, did you see what I just did? I put my finger through here. Why? Because I don't want the strings to be tangled up, number one, and I want to make sure that I have eight strings. It's very easy. When you deal with a kosher talit, it's very easy. Okay? But let's say this fellow Look at him. He is much shorter than the rest of the street. Alaha says, not a problem. As long as you are able to see eight streets, even if this will be a third, okay, not five, six inches, even a third will be kasher. If you have seven streets, problematic, sometimes kasher, but if you have six streets, that the lead is not kasher, bring it to the rabbi or to the gabai, and they need to fix the corner, to replace the corner of the CC. Now, so after you make sure that you have four corners with eight strings, what else do you do? So you bring the talit. There are different opinions in the halakha, how you're supposed to pull up the talit. Not in the final product, but what's happening next? What is next? Some people take the talet, they say the miracha, baruch, and that's it. Yes, what? You skip half of the CC. You took a shortcut. You skip the top. So what is supposed to do? So, there are two ways of doing. Some people do this. You take the talit, that's what the village high breaks down. You say the Beracha. You put it on your head. Then you're going to have this. Now, what this means? So we need to explain. The right side represents the Torah. The left side represents the Yisra. So what do you do? You take the right corner, which is the Torah, you shift it to the left. Why? Because I want to come down the Yisra. So I take the right, I shift it to the left. And then the other left, I shift it to be next to the Torah. 
Sephardim do not cover the face when they put on the talet. Like this, you see my face? That's how you're supposed to wrap the talet after you said the beracha. In some Hasidic or Ashkenazi communities, they cover the, the face. Then I'll bring the talet down. I'll bring it down on my shoulders unless you cover your head. Like many of us do for prayer. And one second, please. One and two. This is how you suppose to wear the talet. You cover your head, it's your choice. You don't cover your head, it's your choice. But that's how the talet needs to be. Why? Because the talet, remember what we learned yesterday, that is a surrounding light or makif. And only when I have two corners on the front, right, and left, and two corners in the back, this is where my entire body is surrounded by the mitzvah. So therefore, wearing the talet, many people, they wear the talet like this. Huh? Is that accurate? No. no. Why not? Because you don't have the corners. Shields is your the Otherwise, you know what happens? Your back is exposed. Yeah. So your back has no protection. And the protection, let's clarify, not only physical, but spiritual as well. Therefore, when you buy a talit, okay, maybe in the olden days, people didn't know better. I do know for a fact that some people have seen it in some places, the way they wear the talit to circumvent the halachic problem of not covering your back. Instead of pulling a scarf, they wear it like this. That's not the way. No. The leg needs to be like this. Two str strings in the front, two strings in the back. That's the way that the leg is supposed to be worn. Now, uh, make sure when you buy a talet or the talet that you have, that it covers your back. If the talet doesn't cover your back, it means that the talet is too small for you. You need to get a talet. As to cover your back. Your back, like father. So like this, this is very good, but I personally will not buy this size talet. I explain, I will buy bigger. Why? Because since I cover my head, usually when I pray. So then, automatically, I need a couple of more inches so that the leg doesn't become too short from my back. But this one, this size is good enough uh, for somebody even that covers the head. The taller you are, the bigger the leg you will need, etc. And the reason why I made this demonstration, besides the request by many, but actually to truly reinforce one of the messages that we learned yesterday that it says many times people wear the talit but the question is are they wearing it properly and that's the reason why if you let me just fold it I will sit down in a moment so this way we continue the content of the fiber it has to be wool from the Torah wool wool Today, nobody makes taletot, which is not wool. Maybe 50 years ago, remember they used to have the silk? It was silk, silk polyester. Yes, polyester. Back then, today in the day, we got an upgrade, uh, you know, and we afford the talet also uh, gets an upgrade. It can, it can be polyester. The... It's not the idea. From the Torah, the strings of the sisim yeah. must match the fabric of the garment. From the oraita, from the oraita, wool, wool. Now, the Torah also speaks about semel rechelim, which is wool. Now, comes the ahavat haim. In this week's Torah portion, we'll continue with the second part of the list of benefits 
אני צס, הקפדה על לבישה טלת קטן כשירה. A person that is careful in wearing the sissit katan. We gave a whole class yesterday. So if you were not here yesterday, look at part one in aitorah.com. The often temidi. You wear it every day. Masliyah. Mechila. Matzila. Misakanot rabot haorbot laadam. In English it means it creates a shield of protection from the dangers that may be roaming around the world and the zehut of the sissit makes the person invisible. You're not going to become the invisible man. It means that you get extra protection from Shammai. What else? Many times people become very tense, very nervous. They worry excessively. It says, from the Benishai, Sheilotu Chugot, Raf Be'alim. And it says, whoever is meticulous on wearing Sisit Katan, that is kasher in a proper way, it brings great benefit to the person to remove fears, anxiety, panic attacks that disturbs the life of the person. So a lady may say, Rabbi, I also want. What? Well, let's be honest, and I apologize to the wonderful female audience of itorah.com. Let's be honest. You think ladies are not are immune to, to emotional situations? Emotional situations, regretfully speaking, it affects people, male or female, no more, two options. That's it, okay? So when the wife, and I reinforce what I said yesterday, when the wife encourages the husband, imagine yourself, your birthday is coming, and now you, your wife asks you, what do you want for your birthday? And then she said, I don't know, surprise me. And then she goes to the bookstore, to the Judaica store, and brings you a sisit katan as a gift. Hopefully you wear sisit katan. But let's say, just in case, you don't. Now your wife gives you a sisit katan. That's an unbelievable gift. You tell her, but it only costs $25. True. But believe me, how much is going to cost you go see a therapist or psychologist, because a person, God forbid, has all kinds of emotional situations. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. There is one more from Ahavat Haim in this week's Perasha. Ahavat Haim was a great rabbi from Iraq who lived in Israel. In the last years, he wrote a beautiful writing habit. Wow, unbelievable book on the Perasha. And it says, I know what I'm going to say now is a bit morbid, but it says that even when the person needs to leave the world, because of the zehut of wearing Sisit Katan throughout the life, the transition is smooth. Next, Helkat Yoshua. It says that looking at the Sisiot, it protects the eyes and it protects the mouth and it protects the heart. Yesterday, we talked about the heart. We talked about the teeth. Now, the teeth is connected to the mouth. Now, how many things can a person do with their mouth? Two basic things. Many things, but two of them, basic, easy, and challenging. Eating. You eat. Kasher, obviously, no question. 
That's easy. The challenging is the speaking. Chazak u'baruch. Could be lashonara, could be lying, could be deceitfulness, hanufa, all these things. So it says the Hekat Yoshua that when a person looks at the sisiot, it acquires a certain level of of aslaha to be careful of not speaking lashonara or not getting angry the way we learned from the Ish Masliyah yesterday, which it comes again from the Bnei Issachar. It says, a person that anger is a frequent visitor. And there are people like that. God forbid, God forbid. And we explain what the Bnei Shai writes, that what's the connection between anger management and the Sisit? They seem to be two opposite extremes. One is a mitzvah from the Torah, Sisit, and anger, it's a problem in the personality of the person. So he explains the Helkat Yoshua two things. First of all, look at the Sisiot which are in front of you. Two front Sisiot when you pray. I ask you a question. Where else in the prayer we hold the two front Sisiot? Chazaku Baruch. And I ask you a bonus question now. Why do we hold the Sisiot when we say Baruch She'amar? How much are you going to bet for that question? <laughs> Why do you hold the Sisiot when you say Baruch She'amar? The two from? Of course I said it many years ago. I'm going to say it again. Beautiful. Thank you for listening. The fact that you remember that I spoke about it, that's already a good sign. So, the two fronts is sealed. First of all, the prayer of Baruch She'aman, the way it says in the Sindurim, we don't know who wrote it. We don't know who wrote Baruch She'aman. According to the great Hachamim, Pitka, was a heavenly document that landed on the table of the rabbis that contains 87 words exactly. And Hemanim Mizahab Umit Paz Rab. Paz is a very specific type of jewel, diamond, so to speak, that has a Shem's name several times and many blessings. Baruch Shemar Veya Olam. Baruch Hu, Baruch Amar Yaseh, Baruch Hosein Ukayem, Baruch Hosein Bereshit, Baruch Nechem Aleharis. So many times you find the word Baruch, 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 Baruch. Blessing Hashem. Now what happens when you hold the two front Sisiot? I'll give you the short explanation. When you hold the two front Sisiot, it says that you are holding Hashem's name. You are holding God's names. How do you do that? You have eight strings and eight strings. That's 16. Five knots, 21. Five knots, 26. So when you hold this in your hands, you are holding Hashem's name, Yod K Vav K. You make sense? Thank you for agreeing. Chazak Baruch. Why we, why we cannot answer right away? Okay, because you want to see if I remember. <laughs> that's it. And that's why at the end of Aruch Shiamar, what do we do? We kiss the CC. It's like you're kissing Hashem. You're kissing the hands of Hashem. So therefore it says, when you do this, in your mind, say, Hashem, help me. That anger does not pay me a visit today. Because we don't know when anger is going to pay us a visit. Sometimes he comes every day. Sometimes he comes once a day, once a week. I cannot answer that question. I'll pray every day that anger doesn't pay us a visit ever. Because we already know the side effects of anger. Mazal. Who wants to have Mazal Tov? 
everybody, right? So it says, you want to activate Mazal Tov? Treat your talent with love. How? It says very clearly, Kipul HaTalet, fold the talent yourself. Don't ask someone unless it's an emergency. Not even your son. Each person falls the talent. And I'm going to tell you a secret. That also, folding the talent is secular for Shalom Bayit on Mosa'e Shabbat. I want you to pay attention at the synagogue. On Mosa'e Shabbat, many of us fall the talent. Allow me to explain. There is a debate in the halakha if on Shabbat you are allowed to fold the talet properly based on the lines. Some opinion says, yes. Other opinion says, do it after Shabbat. But guess what? After Shabbat, after Shabbat, the talet is neatly folded now. But what happens if when I finish my Shabbat prayers, what I do is, I remove the talit, I don't fold it, I personally don't fold it, I do like this, I do like this, I do like this, like this, and I put it inside my koracha or the pulpit till after Shabbat. Shabbat finishes, as soon as Arvit is over, I go, I retrieve the talit, and what do I do when I retrieve the talet? That's what's written in the holy books to do. Check the zil. I shake the talet. Now, you straighten it out. But why do you do that? I don't have to shake it to fold it. I just, let's say that it was like this, right? Like this. I do, I open it. I find the neckline of the talet. I do this, I do this, I fold it, and you'll have a beautiful palette in less than a minute. But what do we do first? We shake the palette. Why do you shake the palette? I'll give you the answer. Because there are a group of angels called Hitsonim, external forces that they gravitate to misfort that are abandoned. When a talent is thrown like this, Heke, during Shabbat, the talent understands. The Malachim also understand. But as soon as Shabbat is over, you know what they do? They look for talentot that the person neglected and didn't fold it properly. So just in case, in those few minutes between Shabbat finish and I'm gonna fold the talet, in the event that these negative angels gravitated towards my talet, from a Kabbalah perspective, I do this. I tell the Malachim, get out of here. Leave me. Now, where else do you do the shaking? Remember? The shlich. Why do you do this in the tashlich? Why do you do this in the tashlich? Exactly. Not the sins. The negative angels that climb from the bottom. Where else do you do this? There is a third place. If you know it, fine. No? Birkata Levana, Hazak Kubaruk When you finish Birkata Levana, according to the Kabbalistic sources, you should do exactly like you do in the Tashlich, and according to some opinions, you should take the, the Sisit Katal and shine it to the light of the moon. Just a reminder, I'm wearing my Sisit. I'm here. I'm here. Unbelievable. Unbelievable message of today. Now, let me see if there is 
more things to add. And it says, one second, please. The Divrei Haim quotes the Yerushalmi, quoted by the Benishai, that this concept of folding the Talet should be done through the owner of the Talet. Not through a third party. Again, there are exceptions. God forbid somebody doesn't feel well, couldn't come to shul, etc. But even in my case, which barely happens that I don't uh, fold the talet, you know, I make sure that as soon as I come to the synagogue, I make sure to do it for this reason. Shalom Bayit is another culprit of lack of folding the talet. You may ask yourself, what has to do Shalom Bayit with talet? Ah, because I didn't fold my talet, Mosai Shabbat, I'm going to have Shalom Bayit issues, God forbid. You know the answer is? Yes. The talet is your chuppah with your wife. And that's why you put on talet under the chuppah. If you already have a chuppah, that you spend X amount of dollars in building a chuppah, for example, right? Why do you need to put on another talet? Short answer. Because the chuppah is the global hovering. The talet under the chuppah is the private chuppah between husband and wife. It's the private domain. So if the talet is not folded, something is missing. So for single people is no problem. Single people is no problem. Not on the Shalom Bay, yeah. but definitely says a person who senses that the mazal is sleeping, reactivate this concept. And let's clarify. We don't want to blame the talet for everything that's happening in our life. But the idea is, the way it's written, that a person shouldn't minimize the value of the misvot and the dividends of the misvot. I'm not sure if I said this yesterday. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure if I said this yesterday. This is the very long version. I'll give you the short version. If I said it, not a problem. Up to 101 times, I can say the same thing, and it's not called repetitive. So I'm okay. I don't think I said this 101 times in my life. So I'd like to say two things. We have a few more minutes. So if I said it, Mahila. If I didn't say it, Hazaku Baruch. So this comes from the Ish Masliyah. And he quotes a sefer called Tefillah Kahalacha, to pray properly. So it says very quickly, what are the benefits of wearing the Sisit Katan? Saves the person from sinning, protects the person from evil eye, protects the person from accusing angels, saves the person from anger, saves the person from the gates of Gehinnam, of heavenly judgment in a severe manner. Ma'arich yamim is blessed with longevity. The person will have the merit of tahiyat ametim and is comparable to all of the misvot of the Torah. That's what the Ish Masriyah writes on this particular topic. Now, I'd like to take a small detour on the class that I'm giving now and to share perhaps a Devar Torah in honor of the great Hacham Mordechai Eliyahu Aleva Shalom. He was the chief rabbi of Israel after Hacham Obadiah Yosef Aleva Shalom finished his uh, rabbinical leadership as the chief rabbi so the next one was just to speak about him, I knew the rabbi very well for many years, Baruch Hashem, but he was the great rabbi that in 1950, together with two other great hachamim, were responsible for the reburial of the Hida. The Hida HaKadosh passed away in Livorno, Italy, 
in the middle of the 1800s. 110 years later, his remains were brought over to Eres Israel. He was the great rabbi Yehida, that his body or bones were moving inside the coffin. That's the written. That's what happened with eyewitnesses. So the great Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu was the only one of the two rabbis that was able to speak because the other two froze. And one of them fainted. Imagine yourself, you are for the Hebra Kaddisha, you're taking, a, you're taking the remains, and suddenly you hear noise coming from the inside. I wasn't born when that happened. Did you trick? Well, of course. Now, I, I'll explain to you what happened. So, you can imagine the fear of the people at that moment. Everybody stay quiet. Was the only one who had the strength and the courage to speak. Just to give you a background, was heavily involved with Kabbalah. He was a great follower of the Benishai, which is also based in Kabbalah, and a great follower of the Hida. So the way I read the story was that Hakam or the Eliyahu stood in front of the coffin. This is in Yerushalayim, Arab and Ohot. And he says, Marana Hida, the great Hakam Hida, we brought you from Italy to Eres Israel to Yerushalayim, Ida Kodesh. All the rabbis involved in the reburial went to the mikveh today before touching your box. But we feel that you are a bit agitated. Don't despair. We'll give you a moment to rearrange yourself and then we'll proceed with the burial. The next few moments, there was a lot of noise coming from inside the coffin. He was dead for over a hundred years. After a few moments, silence came back and they got that as a sign to bury him. Fast forward 60 years later, when Hakam Mordechai Eliyahu passed away, he is buried today next to the Hida. If you go to Haram in Uhud, right? and you go to the main entrance, you'll see like a special room, which by the way, that room was sponsored, or the renovation was sponsored by Mr. Safra, alayhi wa sallam. Okay? We're not talking about something small. They redid the whole thing, they expanded the area, and now there are two graves in that room. The Hida and Hakam or the Haim Tobin. That's the connection between these two greats at the king. And that's why he's buried next to him, which makes a lot of sense. So he was a great, a great Gadol. So in his honor, let's read a commentary written by him on this week's Perasha. I'm not going to go through the different topics of the Perasha not to create confusion, because there are many fascinating topics. The topics from the spies, correct? Then we have the fellow that desecrates Shabbat, right? And he covers wood, etc., with stony. And then we have the topic of the stecheret of the Sisit. So since I'm talking for two days about the Sisit, let's keep talking uh, about the Sisit, etc. So it says as follows. Comes the Ebn Ezra in this week's Perasha, and it says that the Mizvah of the Sisit written in the Torah 
is not limited only when a person prays shaharit, but also involves the mitzvah of the sisid katan. And the sisid katan says, it serves the reminder to the person, as David Amelech writes in the book of Tehillim, Malach Hashem Hone Savim Lideav by Halitzem. The angels of God are camping around those who fear him and they save him. What is this Pasuk talking about savings? If I have the angels of Hashem around me, why do I need rescuing? That's a meaning of Halitzem. It says very simple that the presence of the talet katan on the body of the person not only illustrates the person wearing the uniform of Hashem. What is the uniform of a Jewish man? Kippah and Sisit. Like in the army, right? In the army, the soldiers, they need to have a uniform, correct? You have boots, you have the pants, you have the shirt. Some cases they give you a baseball hat, which is not baseball, it's an army hat, etc. And what happens? In the army, they grade you on the cleanliness of your uniform. They do lineup every day. What they do? Inspection. They inspect you from head to toe. Your shoes need to be shiny. Your garments cannot be wrinkled. It needs to be presentable. Why? You're representing the army. You're representing the United States Army or the Israel, whatever country may you are at. Hamavdil, we are also in the army. In the army of Hashem. Our army is the army of Hashem. So therefore it says that in the event that God forbid there could be something negative going around the world, these malachim say, we're going to rescue you. How these malachim were created, says the great Hakam. The mitzvah of the sisit. The mitzvah of the sisit that shows that you are an army, a soldier in the army of Hashem. And it says, why specifically the mitzvah of the sisit is given so many benefits. How many times people say, I don't wear seat because it's too heavy. I don't wear seat because it's too hot. I don't wear seat because it bothers me. That is the yes and talking. talk. Because what does he want to do? He wants to make sure that we take a step back that we don't have the zechut. But when I love Hashem, when I love something, I don't look at the roadblocks. I look at the goal. What is my goal? My goal is to connect with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. If my goal is to connect with God, it doesn't bother me. Do you think that I like to wake up every day at five o'clock in the morning? Sometimes I go to a couple of rounds, okay? A couple of rounds with a yes and a No, haram, you didn't sleep. No, last night you went to sleep late. Uh, you had a few things yesterday, okay? And guess what? Sometimes he wins, sometimes I win. But I don't let him win all the way. That means I pray a few minutes later to the next minyan. I don't stay in bed till 10 o'clock in the morning, God forbid. Because it's too late to wake up. You miss half a day. You miss the time of the Shema. Shema, prayers. So it says the Hacham, the Libre Mordechai, that when a person loves something, there are no barriers. You deal in a certain type of business, let's say somebody that wants to buy an engagement stone 
to his fiance, right? Amen. Amen. Okay? People go above and beyond to get the best. Right? You don't remember that. Today is one of them. Okay, I know. But today, 21st century, 21st century, it's a different ballgame. It hasn't changed. Things are changing. So imagine you are the groom and you want to please your bride. Obviously, between the pa parameters of normalcy. I'll be the first one to say normalcy. But what are you going to do to maximize your benefit? You're going to go the extra mile. You're going to call someone in 47th Street. You're going to call someone in the Siebel building. You're going to call someone in the exchange, whatever you are. And you're going to try to get the best deal on a beautiful stone. Now, why do you do so much research and homework and you go the extra mile? Because you are in love. And when you are in love, you do more. You don't just try to get by. You go the extra mile. And that's what the Libre Mordechai says. You know why the Mizvah of Sisid has so many benefits? Let me ask you a question. You pull on the Mezuzah. Okay? How much effort did the pulling on the Mezuzah took? Buy a kosher Mezuzah, buy a case, hang it up, Beracha, Chalas. No more than that. That's all. You have a machine in your home. That's it. You come in, you kiss it. How much effort is to kiss it? How much effort? You need to remember. I told you the story a while back. The importance of kissing the mezuzah. It helps the inat shamayim of the person. Why? Because you are acknowledging the presence of Hashem. There was a story of a young rabbi. I believe the story happened with the Hatam Sofer, a great Hacham. And he went to be tested. Back then, talking about 150 years or more. The boy, the young person came to the rabbi's office. The rabbi asks him a few questions. And he says to him, come back tomorrow, we'll continue. The boy was surprised. I mean, the young man wasn't a boy. It was a, per a man. He says, okay. The rabbi says, come back tomorrow. He came back the next day. The rabbi sits down with him a few minutes, asks him a few questions, says, very good. Come back tomorrow. He already got worried. He goes to his friends in the kolel or yeshiva and ask them, tell me, when you went to be tested by the great rabbi, how many times did you go to be tested? He said, one time. We said half an hour. We discussed. He asked me questions. I answered. He said, Mazel Tov. But to me, he says, he's telling me by the third day to come back. Comes him the third day, the student. He sits with the rabbi, and the rabbi asks him questions, and he answers them good. He's not hesitating. He's quoting the right sources. He's answering the way the rabbi expected the answer to be, the question to be answered. So the rabbi says, come back tomorrow. The young man says to the great Hatam Sofer, and it says, Hakam, I beg of you, why are you asking me to come back? If every day this week that we sat down, you ask me the questions, I answer them with flying colors. He says, you want to know the reason? He says, yes. You came to my study four days, three days in a row. You never kiss the mezuzah in the front of the door. Before you become a rabbi, 
Go learn about the Rat Shamayim. Go learn about the Rat Shamayim, then come back to me. Okay? So, we cannot minimize not only the value of the traditions, but even symbolic acts, kissing the mezuzah, kissing the sisit, checking the sisit, wearing the sisit. Again, there are much more challenging misfot than wearing sisit. For example, building a sukkah. You're gonna be a couple of days. Hopefully you know what you're doing. Otherwise you have to buy a sukkah. And to buy a sukkah is not cheap. Or sometimes you have to hire help, and you're going to eat outside, and sometimes it's a bit humid or heavy weather, cold in New York, super hot in Florida, freezing in Montreal. And yet we see that we go out of the comfort of our homes and we'll sit in the sukkah. Why do we do this? Short answer this is how we demonstrate the love to Akadosh Baruch Hu. So for the wonderful men, and the wonderful ladies, the ladies have their homework. Reinforce the mitzvah of Sisid Katan with your husband and children. Give them as a gift. And if they say anything, this is the gift of me, blame me. You can tell the rabbi from Safra Florida says that it's not better gift to a husband. And that's a reason why, by the way, that the tradition dictates that when someone gets married, who gives the talet to the hatan? The kala. That's a beautiful tradition. Okay? Now, in the event, Baruch Hashem, that some of the husbands, or all the husbands, I hope, already were sisit, make sure that when the sisit katan is washed, that the strings are separated individually, as we discussed yesterday, Every string of the sisit represents a different opening of the human body and also brings clarity to the mind by being separated instead of being all tangled up. Today, I, I am aware that they sell in the Judaica stores, right? That's it. A special device or a special mesh bag that you put on the sisit inside so when you do the laundry, which by the way, sisit katan, especially made from wool, which today wool is very light and very thin, and needs to be washed better in cold water. That's the way many people, I remember my home from childhood, the sisit katan didn't go into the washing machine because the washing machine probably will kill. They'll do it by hand with cold water and then you put it to dry, or you hang it up to dry. So Yeratzon Rabotai, that the Neshamot that we mentioned in the beginning have an Aliyah, and those of Refuah Shelema that we mentioned before, Malka, but Shindol has a Refuah Shelema among the Cholim of all of Am Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Umevorah to everyone for Shabbat Kodesh, Perashat Shelah, Makam Hijaz, Shabbat Nevarchim.